Welcome to Solution Focus Future. I'm Joe George. Thank you for joining us. We are here today with the renowned Arnold Hybers. And Arnold, how do you like to be introduced? Um, Arnold Hybers, I'm a psychologist, psychotherapist, family therapist from the Netherlands. We have a small private practice in the center of Holland. Uh, there's four of us, four psychologists. Um, and we see um, uh, adults, we see young people, families, couples. So the whole range of ages. And why Solution Focus Brief Therapy? Well, I came across the, the Solution Focus approach. I watched um, on one evening, long time ago, I watched a video with Insu talking with a family. Uh, and and I, I was so inspired because she, I, I, I didn't understand what she, what she was doing exactly. But I got so inspired because her, her respectful way of talking with the family. And then I thought, I have to know more about this. I told you, I was trained uh, by Insu and Steve directly. Uh, this was in uh, 2000, the year 2000. And there was... They came to my country, they came to Utrecht. And I was so lucky because they were teaching in the building next to the school of my kids. So I took my kids to school and I went to see them. And uh, that, was, that was fantastic. First, um, I was trained by Steve for three days. And you know, Steve, he's a kind of introvert um, personality and quite different from Insu because she's very charismatic and very uh, expressive. And so, yeah, I was very lucky to, to meet them in person. And from there, I invited her to teach um, Dutch psychotherapists, and she said yes. So one year later, she was sitting next to me in my car. Uh, one time I was teaching a group in, um, in the north of Holland. And then the owner of the of the place, the, he came up to me. He said, "What what is it? What exactly are you doing?" Because a lot of the time, groups when they leave the building, they feel exhausted and you know they are tired and they want to get home, but not this group. And I love this compliment. This was wonderful, and that's what I often find that it evokes so much enthusiasm from the trainees. Uh, do you use solution-focused thinking in your own life? Yeah, yeah sure. And, you know, what I um, we have three daughters. And what I love when they, when they tell me, Daddy, that was not solution-focused, what you just said there. It means that they understand, you know, the so solution-focused language and the solution-focused approach. That's what I love most. And also my wife, I was, I was painting uh, a big wall, you know, it's heavy to paint a wall white. And then my wife came in and she said, uh, hey, you forgot this little bit there. <laughs> and I said, that's not very solution focused. <laughs> you, you need to say that you're, you're, you painted wonderfully around this little, uh, little spot there. So yeah, we use it in daily life. And that's a lot of fun. What are the three most important things you think people should master when they learn to use solution-focused thinking? I, I think acknowledgement is very important. And that's what I often miss, you know, when people talk about a solution-focused approach. Because when a client comes to see a psychologist, they want to express their worries and they want to talk about the problems they experience, the reason that they want to see a psychologist or a therapist. And I think acknowledgement and showing your understanding is very, very important. So this platform of mutual understanding is there. And this also creates safety for the client. The client feels safe when someone understands you, when a therapist understands you. So one, um, acknowledgement. I think this is very important, the grounding. Second, um, 
to master the solution focus questions. You know, asking the client, what do you want to be there instead of the problem? How would you like your relationship with your wife or the relationship with your ch children to be? So asking questions about the solution, uh, uh, about the preferred situation. And I think uh, on number three, um, solution focused language. So relabeling, uh, reframing the problem language into more constructive language. I think that's in my top three. Now, everyone brings previous experiences into what they do. Um, and you said you initially got trained around 2000. So what was your original theoretical approach and how did it influence your use of solution-focused practice? I was trained as a systemic therapist, as a family therapist in a hospital in Utrecht. And also I was trained in psychonatic, uh, psychodynamic approach, uh, in, you know, in Utrecht. So that's my past life. Do you think those two influenced how you use solution-focused brief therapy? I think so, especially the systemic approach, because I think solution-focused approach is uh, is one of the schools within the systemic approach. And so it certainly, and I, I felt very at home with the systemic people. And I met with Minuchin, you know, uh, family therapist from, from Buenos Aires. Uh, and I, I felt very at home with the systemic people, yeah. What fields beyond counseling and therapy in general uh, do you feel best aligned with solution-focused thinking? I think music. I'm a great music lover. Explain that one, please. How does that And happen? Because um, music is like beyond words. And it can comfort you when you feel sad. And it can help you to relax. And it, 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 it inspires. So the creative thinking is there. It's, it's nice when the creative thinking is there. And when you manage to evoke the creative thinking of your clients, so it's a very creative process. So I think music um, comes very close to the solution focus approach, listening to music, playing music, uh, composing music. Does that surprise you? <laughs> yeah, you're the first person who's said that. Like I've heard, I've heard a lot of different things. Uh, you're the first person who's brought up music. Do you know Matthew Seligman? No. From America, he's a family therapist, solution-focused therapist, and he's a great lover of music, and he's a great lover of jazz music. So talk to him. <laughs> Were there any moments when you felt solution-focused brief therapy wasn't working for you? Not really. Not really. I mean, in in. Th Therapy, uh, there has to be uh, a good fit, you know, between the client and the therapist. And when this match is not there, then, you know, uh, talking uh, therapy is not so easy. But uh, I, I haven't met any situation where the solutions focus approach uh, does not work. So relating to the client, you know, uh, asking questions, asking the solution-focused questions. Um, it works. It works. Uh, if you had to come up with an advertising campaign for solution-focused brief therapy, what would your slogan be? A co-creating dialogue. <laughs> I have to think about this one. <laughs> Something about co-creating, though. Yeah. Excellent. So you've done this a lot more than I have. What am I missing? What would you like to add? In the interviews? Yeah. Like what kind of things, uh, what are you proud of that's happening or what do you think is interesting and in the stuff that you've seen around that you'd like to add? Um, something that I'm proud of is the solution focused circle technique uh, that I developed. And it's very easy. You draw two concentric circles and you start interviewing your client, your family or your couple or your adult client or young client. 
you start interviewing them about uh, successes, things they have achieved, things they are happy with, you know, skills they are happy with. And you write down words in the inner circle. So it's to start the session with strengths, competencies of the client. And then you move to the outer circle and you start interviewing your client about um, things they want to achieve, things they want to, you know, um, goals, ambitions, things they want to be different in their lives. And you write down keywords in the outer circle. So within 15 or 20 minutes, you collect, it's like collecting a treasure. Uh, you collect all these, for the client, important uh, themes. Uh, and that works very well. And the circle technique has become very popular, not only in my country, but uh, also uh, in India. I travel to India every year, South Africa, China, I did, I did an online training with Mexico two weeks ago. So it's culture proof circle technique. And you know, both the therapist and the clients, they, they love it because within a very uh, short amount of time, you uh, capture a lot of important themes. And also what helps is it makes it visual. So you can build during your session, you can build on the things you write down. So if I'm understanding correctly, the inner circle is really like the successes and, and exceptions. And then the outer circle is the preferred future. Yeah. Yeah. The outer circle, the goals, you know, the directions of the client. Yeah. Yeah. So you have two uh, essential solution-focused um, uh, subjects, you know, the successes and the goals. And how did you come up? Uh, that's an innovative way of doing a lot of the stuff that I've, I hear other people do. But how did you come up with that? I was working with families, parents and children. Uh, and I noticed that parents, they want to express their worries in the first interview, you know, intake. They want to talk about all the problems their child has. So the child was sitting there listening to all this stuff, you know, the problem stuff. And the child says, ah, that's what I thought what, what was going to happen, you know, talking about the things that I do wrong and th talking about all my problems. So I thought um, of uh, something, you know, um, I, I wanted to come up with something to change that. Instead of talking about the problems in the, in the first interview. And I came up with these circles. And that worked well. That worked well. So I interviewed a child. I interviewed father, mother, um, brother, sisters. Uh, and I only write down in the inner circle or the outer circle when they all agree about it. They must agree about the goal. Uh, and during this um, uh, circle interview, um, when parents come up with problems like, you know, our child lies a lot or steals, I don't write that down because that's problem language. I first asked them, what do you want to, instead of lying? And they say, well, we like our child to be honest and, or to be open about difficult matters. Uh, so then I start writing to be open about dif the difficult matters. First, I ask a child, do you agree? You want to learn this skill? Uh, and when they say yes, when everyone agrees, then I write down. So it's then it becomes a solution focused family talk, solution focused family session. And it works because also because you make it visual. And um, when you have clients with a, um, you know, when the attention span is a little bit of a problem, they can't concentrate for a long time, it helps them when you make it visual. 
So you can build during the session, you can build on the things you write down in these circles. Um, at that time, Insu Kim Burke was still alive. So I showed her the circles and she said, that's wonderful. And she said, can you use the things that you write in the inner circle? Can you use them, you know, to achieve your goals? So she was immediately um, trying to relate the competencies, the successes to, to the goals of the clients. Yeah. And uh, I also noticed you mentioned skills and it seems like the people from Northern Europe, well, I, I've only really encountered um, Ben Furman and you, uh, but you both, I know Ben does a lot with skill development, especially with little kids. And um, do you think that certain branches of solution focus deal more with skill building and and building that through the language than other branches yeah especially ben ben you know the kids skills he talks about skills all the time uh, with with children with adults so what is the skill you would like to learn you know and me too i like it yeah. I, I developed um i'm quite um uh, enthusiastic about a question that I like to ask to clients. Uh, suppose um, um, tomorrow morning you wake up and you master two skills that you're not very good at right now, but you wake up with, uh, you know, you're mastering two skills. What what would they be? And I ask these questions to trainees, but also to clients. And it's a wonderful question. Most people, they, they like to answer it. So I was seeing this father, uh, daughter, mother. I was seeing this family and a 16-year-old daughter. And the father, they, did, they hadn't spoken with each other within the family for about two years. They were very angry very angry so they didn't speak to each other they didn't say good morning uh, to each other and so there was a lot of tension in the family this is awful not speaking to your daughter not speaking to your father and the mother was very tense so uh, they came to see me and i asked this question the father said uh, my skill would be that i have a memory loss so I said, what do you mean by it? And he said um, that I have forgotten about all fights. Now. And so I can face my daughter in, in a kind of new way. And the daughter said, my skill would be that um, forgiveness. I would forgive, you know, my father for the rude things he said to me. And so I... Uh, and, and I asked what, what, what would be the benefits for this skill. She said that I can be more friendly, a little bit more friendly towards him. And so from there, uh, we, had a, we had a constructive talk, a constructive session. I love that twist. It's, it's like, it, it's a total twist on both the tomorrow and miracle question, combining the both. But adding yeah, it's a sort of miracle question. Yeah. And uh, including the new skill. So you must try it, Joe. It's a nice, nice, it's a nice question. You work as a school counselor, right? Yes. Yeah. So tr try it, try it. Ask your client, you know, suppose tomorrow morning you wake up and you master a certain skill that you don't have right now. What what would that be? That's uh, that would be an interesting twist, um, especially for a follow up session because it's kind of like a it's a follow up on the best hope, but yeah, it's a total new direction as well. Well, so what are your best hopes moving forward? My best hopes for training. Everything. Everything. What are your best hopes like? Thinking of all the stuff, all the different balls you have in the air. What's next? I'm, I, I have to write. I have to write. So I'm, I'm, uh, I've started to write an article about the circle technique. 
Uh, so this is what I really want to do, to take some time and write an article. Um, yeah. Where would you want to? Uh, where would you want to have it released? It's going to be released in Finland by Ben Furman. <laughs> and how many languages are you planning on writing it in? Um, uh, two languages for a start, so Finnish and uh, and English. So it's going to be translated into Finnish. But uh, you so. naturally, when, in your thought process, do you write in Dutch first, in the, or do you write in English first? English, English, yeah. So write English. Yeah. That's. Uh, I prefer I prefer English to Dutch. Why? Um, there are so many nice nuances in the English language, really. Where do Where do you want to get into next? Like you said, writing. Um, but and you're you're pretty multinational. You get all over the place. Uh, are there anything any places you want to go back to again, or any new areas you want to get into for a first time? I I would love to get back to India as soon as this pandemic is over. I would love to go back to India. I have many friends there, many colleagues there. And there's quite a, a huge um, solution-focused community. So for all of the stuff in your busy day, I'm going to throw your question back at you. Tomorrow when you wake up and you have a new skill that would make this writing and everything else even easier, what would that skill be? Um, I think I need to... Um, relax a bit more because i've been working so much so the skill is it's a relaxation skill <laughs> the first small signs that you're doing that um just wake waking up uh, taking time to have breakfast taking time to enjoy a nice cup of coffee i'm a real coffee fan listening to some um classical music like Ravel or Bach or so it, it would be a relaxing skill. Yeah. Now you said, um, you said you're a big fan of music. Do you play? Yeah. Yeah. I play a little bit on the piano. Yeah. And do you like to do more classical stuff or more jazz or contemporary? More like classical stuff. Yeah. And like you say, you play a little bit. You've probably been playing for like decades, haven't you? <laughs> Yeah, and I did compose a little bit. So I made, uh, some years ago, I made a CD. Uh, I, I can send you some music if you like. <laughs> I can send you some music that I composed. <laughs> that's fascinating. What haven't you done? Pardon? I said, that's fascinating. What haven't you done? Sounds mm -hmm. like you're pretty multifaceted all over the place. Yeah, I think, you know, um, solution focus and therapy, you know, and the solution folk therapy and music are quite close it's it's a creative process so every talk with your client is like an adventure so you have to be creative all the time you have That's to create these wonderful questions thank you very very much for your time is there anything you'd like to add before we go no no thank you very much it was great fun talking to you Pleasure's all mine. Thank you for I your wish time. wish you all the best. If you find this interesting and haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe, like, or share this site and hit that little bell button to get notifications as well.